Hi. I am so happy to welcome as our guest today, Kate Northrup. She is, among many things, an expert in helping people create financial freedom. Thanks so much for talking to us today. You're so welcome. Happy to be here. Thanks. So tell us, first of all, before we get started, what does it mean to create financial freedom? And you've got a particularly interesting story and in how you started down that path at a very, very young age, which is so impressive. Thank you. And, you know, I know a lot of the moms out there listening right now would love to hear it, not just for our own sake, but also because we'd like to help our own children, sure. many of whom might be young, might be teenagers, might be embarking on their own careers now at, you know, age 22 or, mm -hmm. or more. So your story is so impressive. So if you could please tell us how you got, went down this path of helping people, first of all, how you created your own financial freedom and then how you started helping other people do the same. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. So happy to talk about that. So my definition of financial freedom is when your passive or residual income is mm -hmm. greater than your living expenses. So I think one of the big fallacies is that financial freedom has to be created by accumulating more money right. or increasing your income. And it doesn't necessarily because what it is is actually creating streams of revenue that come in whether you're working or not, whether it's through investments, businesses, you know, real estate income, that sort of yeah. thing. And you can achieve that by either increasing those sorts of income mm -hmm. or also decreasing your living expenses. So I think that, that as Americans, we tend to think more is more is more. But really, one of my big philosophies of creating financial freedom is simplicity and living yes. with what we truly value and only spending money on what we truly value. So that's one thing. But, <laughs> um, so I started a business when I was 18 in the network marketing industry or direct right. sales, it's also mm -hmm. known, of, known as, with a company called USANA. And I did that because I had read in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is by Robert oh, Kiyosaki. Great book. Yeah, great book. And uh, for those of you who are listening who have kids or, you know, who are, well, anybody should read it really, but I read that book when I was 16. Wow. And it changed my entire yeah. perspective on money and finance. Both of my parents are doctors. They both always made great money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't want for anything as kids. And they worked all the time. Right. And so in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki talks about this um, concept of more time freedom and being yes. able what to do what you want with your time. And so I always thought if you made more money, you have to work more hours. But it's a concept of detaching the amount of money you make from needing to necessarily work more hours for it. Now, for a while, obviously, you have to work harder for it right. but then yeah, over time yeah, yeah. it's like what are you willing to do now right. so that long term you can do the things that yeah, you, can, you want to do so I, I built that business in the network marketing industry I still have that business and then as a part of building that business I have um, helped other people create similar businesses mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. but then also really developed a curriculum around more of the emotional and spiritual aspects of mm. finance, not just Beautiful. the literal, what are you doing with your checkbook, right. what are your streams of right. revenue, you know, all of that stuff. So it's, I think it's, it's really both. It's the practical, it's the emotional, it's Absolutely. the spiritual. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I know that you took, I think in 2011, a trip across the country talking about this to so many different yeah. people. And I think I heard you say to someone once before that you learned some really valuable lessons on how to work on your business rather than in your business or something mm. like that. You put it in a really beautiful way that I'm not summarizing so well here. But you talked about um, it's not a question of working super hard and putting your nose to the grindstone. It's about working smarter and knowing yes. yourself. So yes. could you talk us a little bit about that? Because a lot of the people listening, whether they're 25, 45, or, or anything in between, are thinking of potentially starting their own business yeah. or um, going into business with a partner, doing something creative, and that can really suck your life, a lot of it. <laughs> yes, and, it can. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about simplicity. I love that word you use. Yeah. Well, one of the concepts that's really important to understand is cash flow. And mm. cash flow can come into your life in a number of different ways. It, it could be as an employee, so you have mm -hmm. a salary or an hourly wage. It could be as a self-employed person, so where you run your own business, but money doesn't come in unless you are working. And then it can come in as a business owner where you own a system that makes money whether you work or not, or as yeah. an investor where you've put money towards something right. and then it, it um, brings in other money, right? Mm -hmm. You put in money, <laughs> it grows. 
So what happens, this is the biggest mistake I see people make when they start their own business. They're okay. like, yes, I'm so excited to start my own business. I want the freedom, I want creativity, I have this vision, and yeah. they're so psyched. And then what happens is they end up being owned by their business. All right. So instead of, so they used to have a job, now they don't have a job, but now they own their job. And if nobody's, if they're not waking up and making the donuts, as it were, no donuts are being made, no money comes in the door. Right, and so effectively so, they're just trading time for money. Is still, that what you're saying? Still yeah. trading time for money. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant, if you're a doctor, if you make widgets, if you make purses, whatever it is, if you're the only one who can have revenue come in, yeah. you own a job and you're still making money linearly, trading right. hours for dollars. Right. So as you're thinking about your business or your creative path or whatever your passion may be, really think first, before you do anything, think first about what is your business model mm -hmm. and how is the revenue going to come in and mm -hmm. how can I have revenue coming in whether I'm working or not. Even if that's not going to happen for five years down the road, you need to begin with that in mind so that five years down the road you're not realizing, wait, I'm still trading hours for dollars and I have really nothing to show for it and uh-oh, I don't really have a business. Right, right. That's which really is common. great. Yes, yes, that's yeah. great advice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> so I know you therefore talked a little bit about how to create financial freedom. We've talked about the money aspect. We've talked a little bit about the emotions that go through, that, that's going on when you're trying to simplify and your values and how that takes yeah. part in the whole system. Could you talk a little bit about if we've got emotional well-being on one hand and our business and we've got our physical health. I know your mother is one of my all-time favorite authors and doctors and could you tell us a little bit about what you know from her past teachings and how yeah. the physical plays into the emotional when you're running your own business sure. and your real life yeah I mean it is so interconnected <laughs> um, so my mom's Dr. Christian Northrup, she wrote a book called Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. Which I love. Great book. Every woman, woman needs to read it that is. book. It really is. I refer to it a lot, yep. actually. I'll just read chapters in that instead of calling my mom to ask my health questions. <laughs> she already wrote the book on it. So money is, so every area of our life aligns with a different area of our body. Mm -hmm. And it's called the chakra system. If you're not familiar with that, there's seven of them. And the second chakra is the money, sex, and power chakra. And it is this area Powerful of the chakra. body, and it's where our, it's our pelvis, it's the reproductive area, it's the low back. Right. So when we're having issues in those areas, whether it's a hormonal thing, whether it's PMS, whether it's, um, you know, I mean, there could be any number of things going on there, right? Low back pain is very yes. common in men and actually some women. That is related to how we deal with money, sex, and power in the world. Wow. And so it's really important to begin to listen to the signals that your body is giving you. And, and I have a, a, a personal story around this, which I won't get into now, but it was amazing what I was having some gynecological issues that would just not go away no matter what supplements I took, no matter how I changed my diet. I mean, I was doing all the holistic stuff, but I it wasn't until I changed the way I was operating mm -hmm. in terms of my money and power in my life that wow. it cleared up. Fascinating. So that's a really amazing. important piece. Gosh, yeah. wow. Thank you for, for sharing that with us, even though you didn't go into the nitty gritty of the <laughs> no. story. Yeah, it, it, it's in my book, the nitty gritty, but you know, we don't have time to get it. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, I am dying to read your book. So tell us about that. It comes out at the end of the year. Out September 3rd, okay. 2013. Okay. It's called Money, a Love Story, A Kinder Approach to Financial Freedom. Fabulous. And it's coming out with Hay House. And Wonderful. I'm really Love excited. It, it combines what we've been talking about, the practical and the emotional and actually mm -hmm. the physical as well. All of those aspects so we can really look holistically at our money and create the lives that we dream of with the ultimate luxury, which is choice. Right. And that's how I define freedom is really choice. The ability to choose what we do with our time yeah. and our resources and our energy and to spend it in ways that really are, we're passionate about. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. So just before we close and say goodbye, I know you're speaking at Hay House tonight and you generally have a very busy schedule speaking for Hay House events and, and your own separate events and book readings and things like that coming up. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how viewers can get more of you. You've oh, got a website well, and you. then we've got your book coming <laughs> and you know people are going to want to want more. Your website's beautiful and oh, there's so you. much amazing golden nuggets there that people can go find. Thank you. So you can visit me at katenorthrup.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Kate Northrup. So it's um, Facebook and then I, it's like Kate Northrup fan page is the little thing. Good. I'm Kate Northrup on Twitter. I'm Kate Northrup on Instagram. I love Instagram. 
um, and I love to connect with people. So please come find me in all those places. Hop on my list because I have a free guide, the five things you've got to do to create financial freedom, and you can just download that right on my site. Awesome. She also knows so much about health and nutrition. She's the real deal when it comes to physical and emotional well-being, how it's all put together. In addition to the spiritual well-being, you know, you've got the whole package going. So I really appreciate you speaking with me today. Thank you. It's a and pleasure. I think our viewers are going to get so much out of this. Thank you so much. And I, I can't it. wait to hear you speak tomorrow. So thanks. Thank you.